Hey everyone, Siddharthus back here with another Daisy server hosting video. I'm going over the Daisy editor for PC. Keep in mind, a lot of my videos are solely based around PC server hosting and PC Daisy versions. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, so Daisy editor is the, I guess, newer version to be able to load up the game, spawn in assets, build your own custom scenes and scenarios and areas in the game, uh, and then save that file and upload it to your server so everyone else can can interact with what you've created. Uh, so getting right into it, uh, first thing you've obviously got to have is you got to have a copy of Steam on your computer, and then you will want to make sure you are subscribed to uh, Daisy Editor. You also want to be subscribed to CF, Builder Items, and Apps Framework. Um, so once you're subscribed to those, um, close out Steam. You're going to want to open up the Daisy standard launcher. If you're using the Daisy standalone uh, launcher, the third party one, you don't want to use that. Go ahead and go back to your normal launcher, head over to the mod section, make sure that the required items, so Daisy editor, community, uh, Daisy editor, Dabs framework, CF, and builder items are loaded. I've included the um, expansion bundle and the expansion licensed. You don't necessarily need to I believe there's some items that for my use case i've loaded them but all you need is what daisy editor needs um, so once you've loaded the mods go ahead and run the game and you should be loaded in so once you're in uh, we go and open the editor select your map uh, for my server and my stuff i've been using the stars plus map and what this will do is it will load you into a standard unaltered version of the game. Um, it's going to have all the buildings, everything. So once you load in, uh, go over a couple of controls. Uh, your mouse is locked to, or your mouse is set to a, you know, look, look view. Uh, if you want to be able to actually see your mouse cursor, press the space bar. You have access to your mouse so you can interact with everything mouse again and we're back on the mouse look um you can do w a s and d so forward backwards left and right uh, q and z to go up and down um, if you have your mouse look open you can actually right click and drag to look around Holding shift and moving in any, in any direction will be a fast movement. It's fast if we go back, not holding shift, a little bit slower. We'll do it in six succession here. So going normal and then we go fast. And if you hold alt, you'll go slow. I'll let go of alt here. And this is normal. Uh, press M brings up your map. Um, you can teleport anywhere around the map. Uh, I'm going to your location. If you press the middle mouse button, it'll it'll move you your character to that area or your camera to that area. And we are. So, getting into actually editing the files. Um, you can save the file as whatever you want. Um, you can see I have a few here. Um, but what I wanted to mention here is if you're going to have a bunch of different areas around your map, um, so like if you have something up at Servograd or the Prison Island, um, or if you want to upgrade Electro, whatever you want to do, you can make separate files for those separate areas. Um, so, for example, scroll out, you can see where my map's at, or where my camera's at. We load up one of mine. Load up my, my safe trader here. You can see that these white dots appeared on my screen for one. That's actually the items. It's where they're located on the map. Um, I can uh, move these items around from the map view if I wanted to. Um, but if we leave the map view, 
you can see this is this is my safe trader. I pressed Y there to clear all of my uh, UI elements. Um, so here's my safe trader. If I go ahead and load up another uh, item, so my book, so I've upgraded below it a little bit. Let's see here, if I zoom out, it saves where my camera was last positioned. So we can see here that I've updated below to some the map view those boxes near my safe trader are gone and all my boxes are down here because this is where all the items are actually in for each file so we're on my below to map if we go back up here we'll see that none of the changes i made are here anymore well what we do you'll see later on is we load up all of the files together onto the server. And then when the server loads, it reads from each of those files to know where to place everything. So let's bring my trader back. Okay. So for simplicity, we're just gonna stay here. We're gonna throw some items in. Um, over here on the left-hand side is where all the items that you can place are at. Um, so let's do concrete. Let's do some barriers, do some concrete barriers around the house. I know it's pretty, pretty simple item, but it's just just for tutorial pur purposes. Um, so some of the basic controls, um, when you go to place an item, if you use your scroll wheel, you can spin the item. If you hold shift while using the scroll wheel, you can slow the shift or slow the rotation down. You can place the item by clicking on it and go and look. You can see the bounding box around it. Um, double clicking on the item brings up the properties. Uh, I'll get back into some of the properties here in a little bit. Um, with your item placed, and selecting the the anchor, which is this blue box, selecting the anchor uh, point, you press and hold shift and click and hold on the anchor and move your mouse around. You can rotate the item. Doing the same action, press and hold alt and then click and hold. You can raise and lower the item. Uh, basic copy and paste functions of Windows also work. So if I select the item, I hit Control C, copies it. If I hit Control V, it pastes it. Control Z undoes it, and Control Y redoes it. Um, we can select multiple items at once. You can move them all at once. You can rotate them all at once. Um, the rotation one, if you select one item to click on and rotate it will center rotate around that one item so if i grab this middle one it will rotate them around that one uh, the raise and lower function also works does them all in unison um, some of the other controls that we have are up here at the top we've got the magnet tool so you'll see that this item is a little bit buried on the ground in the ground on that side wall I picked this item up with the magnet tool now, it should auto level it to the terrain below it. And it did for the most part. Um, no, the magnet tool is not 100% accurate. So there you go, it got, got a little bit better with the terrain. It's just, I think there, there's a bump in the terrain right there that's hard to work with. Um, the other tool, I'm gonna unselect that for now, is the collision tool. So what that'll do is it will you take this item and it detects that there's another object below it, it will uh, make itself go above uh, the item that it's about to collide with. That's that's my understanding of the collision mode. Um, and then you've got ground mode. Um, ground mode has some, some weird behavior with it, um, but I mainly use ground mode to ensure that 
um, when I move items, they don't reset down to their uh, their uh, vertical positions. So you see there when I moved that um, off of here, it just dropped down. Well, let's say I buried it a little bit, right? Well, if I go to move this item, it's probably going to pop up above ground. It did. Well, that may seem nice, but if you're working with a lot of items that uh, you've just spent, you know, so much time placing correctly and you don't want them to move, I have found that if you, so we'll go put that back in the ground again, you use the ground mode, you don't have to be selected on it at the time, but if you use ground mode, it keeps the orientation or the, or the level of the, um, the item when you moved it. Um, so I'll kind of move it here. Looks like it jumped a little bit there. Yeah. We can see with ground mode off, it brings it all the way back up. Um, you can also toggle your light on. Um, it's probably not gonna do any good until I actually go in here to the environment. And I change my time of day to night time. Um, if you're using dark nights, like the super dark nights uh, in game, uh, make sure you go down here and change your lighting config. Um, you can see that there. And then you can turn our light on. If I use this, so I have got some network lights that I have uh, that I have giving off some, some uh, spotlights in areas. daytime back uh, you can change the actual date too so this is out of 365 uh, so right now it's showing roughly 300, uh, 311 days throughout the year uh, through the year uh, so like late fall um, so getting back to the actual properties screen here um, so you can do some really fine adjustments here. Um, you can type in, you know, you can type in actual numbers. So if I delete this, it should start to, yeah, you can see it rotate there. Um, if I take off this three, it will automatically start dropping it. Um, you can also use the scroll wheel on, on the actual uh, entry field to change its value. You can hold shift to change the value less. Um, same with these other ones. So I do shift, or sorry, scroll wheel to move it. I do shift to move it just a little bit. And same with these. I'm holding shift now. Let go. And do it more rapidly. Um, if you want to delete items, um, Come up here to the paintbrush. Uh, you start on a tree brush, which is these. Um, there's other tree brushes. Um, but if you go over to the delete key, you can actually delete default game items. So like we talked about earlier is all these white squares are all of my items that I've placed. Well, I can come in here. You can see if you know this location any that there used to be a bus here. Well, I've deleted that bus. I don't know if we'll, we'll find it. Let's see. No, I can't find it, but <laughs> I digress. Um, you can use the delete key, their delete brush. I'm going to shrink the size of the brush here. So these benches, for example, these benches are populated by the game's default mission file. The developers placed these benches here. I can delete them if I want to, but this gets into the other aspect of the Daisy editor, which is the server side Daisy editor loader. Now you have to have Daisy editor on your server if you want this custom file to load in. Well, if you want any of your deletions to be um, carried over, you have to load the Daisy editor loader onto server and your uh, all your 
clients must load the same mod as well. Um, final thing I wanted to go over is just saving your files um, and then uploading them to your server. So the files should save to your documents. So your user folder should save to your documents, Daisy, and then the editor folder. That should be the default location, I believe. Um, you should see a uh, see a set of files that you've been working on. So here's my outpost file that just saved auto saved a little while ago, and then I saved it. All you would do is you would copy this file. And then over on your server, you would go to your server directory, your MP missions, your mission file, and then you should, if you have um, the editor loaded already on your server, you should have this folder here. And all you would need to do is paste it in here. I'm not going to paste it in here because I've made edits. I don't want to. I don't want to apply to my live server. Um, and then once your server restarts, uh, whether scheduled or manually, uh, that new file should take effect. Um, I'll, I'll get another video put together for um, generating spawn locations and stuff like that. Um, but for now, this was just a basic intro on getting it installed and some of the basic features of it. Got any questions? Post them down in the comments. Thanks.